Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and yesterday uh, Unity 2018.1 was released, and one of the major new features of it is the new Shader Graph. Now, Shader Graph is a visual system for creating shaders. It's a drag-and-drop approach to authoring shaders, which is uh, kind of a godsend for more visual-oriented or less programming-oriented people. Uh, and even for programmers, it can make your life a lot easier. So that's what we're going to look at today is how to use Shader Graph. Now, this isn't going to get into the depth of how to actually create shaders. This is more about how to show you how to use the tools. The uh, uh, act of authoring shaders itself is a whole different skill which could fill a book or three. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Now do be aware, obviously, you're going to need Unity 2018.1 for this to work. Uh, also, uh, or later of course, um, it also only currently works, at least as of the time of writing, using the lightweight render pipeline. So you cannot use the high definition pipeline yet. Uh, this is very much under development and hopefully will be available soon. So just come on in, create a new project using the lightweight render pipeline and hit create project. And if you do use the high definition render pipeline, you're just gonna, your, your shader won't render at all. So just do be aware of that. Um, now, where did Unity go? Oh, there it is. Okay, we'll let this run. This takes a few seconds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pause for now. Now, if I happen to lose you at any point in time, do not worry about it. I've actually done a step-by-step text-based version of this exact tutorial uh, available at Gay from Scratch, and I will link that down below. All right, so our scene is now loaded. Uh, you can see this is the default scene for the lightweight render pipeline, but we want none of that. We're actually going to create a fresh scene for this example. Just go ahead, start up a new scene, and there's a little bit of setup we need to do. So first off, we need to actually enable the uh, shader graph functionality. Um, with the more current versions of Unity, there is now something called the package manager. Head on into the package manager. In here, click on all, and then locate shader graph right down here. And what you want to do is just click install. Now this is going to install a couple of scripts. And it's going to finish with this progress, and then you're going to go along, and it's going to pop up another one, which is very annoying. Uh, but So now the shader graph is available. So I'll just exit out. I'm going to wait for the next pop-up because it always catches me off guard. Any minute now. All right, so I just get, oh, there it comes. There we go. Okay, so shader graph functionality is now available in Unity. Let's just set up a scene so we can go ahead and use it. Uh, in our scene, we're just going to create a simple 3D object. So down, go down, right click, create, uh, and create a sphere like so. And we're going to need a material and then, of course, the shader that we're going to create. So the material, just go into the material section, go create, and make a material. Like so, I'm gonna call mine my material. Uh, now head on back over to the assets, and what we want to do is go ahead and create a uh, folder. Uh, we'll call it shaders. And now right-click that guy and click create shader. And then you'll have PBR graph, subgraph, and unlit graph available. Now, if those three options do not show up here, that means that your um, your earlier process of setting up the package failed or you didn't do that step. So that's why this part is critical. Um, so if this doesn't show up, make sure that your package is properly enabled. All right, so that created our shader. I will call it my shader, like so. And now the process basically goes, you add the shader to the material. So let's go back to our material, my material, select our shader, and then simply drag and drop it onto the material, like so. And then select your material, and drag and drop it onto your object, like so. And that is essentially um, the process of creating a shader, but now let's actually get into the shader graph functionality. And doing that simple, we just go to the shader and double click it, and this loads up the shader graph tool. Now this guy's pretty straightforward, but uh, I do warn you, it can be a little buggy. If this guy goes away from being resized, the blackboard over here, uh, the only way I've managed to get it back was basically to go into my app data and clean, deleting all the temp information for Unity. So there is a setting that gets fouled up. So if this guy disappears, do be aware that that is a common and known bug. But navigating around this guy is pretty simple. This guy is your inputs right over here, the blackboard. The uh, PBR master right here, you can think of this as your output. And here is a preview of your shader in action. Now you'll notice on the left-hand side of here, uh, there are a number of different input channels. So if it's on the left, it's input into that shader. If it's on the right, it's output from that. Now, since this is ultimately the um, final node of our shader, there is no output from it. You've also got the ability to switch the workflow style between specular lighting and metallic. All that really does is it adds a specular channel or a metallic channel. And really, that's the only difference there. You can also say uh, how to do the uh, alpha blending 
and you can say if this is a transparent or an opaque shader or not. Um, and you've got a number of different channels that feed into this actual shader. And those are basically what we're going to use next. Um, you can also navigate around. Um, left mouse button select something, moves it around. Middle mouse button pans the entire surface around. And uh, scroll wheel zooms in and out like so. Uh, you can also resize these windows. So if you want a bigger preview, just grab it in the corner down here. So, and you can size that out. I recommend not touching this guy because like I said earlier, it is very buggy. Uh, you can also collapse things down like so, and you can also collapse away the preview or the details and the preview like so. All right, so that is our basic shader setup. We can start off um, the albedo channel here or the color or diffuse channel. Uh, you can go ahead and just set straight up color like so. Um, and you'll notice back here, nothing happened. Well, that's because you gotta go ahead and save your asset. But once you save it, Boom, your shader is immediately applied back in the editor. Um, now let's go ahead and create a very, very simple shader. Uh, so all I'm going to do is basically set up a texture, um, a texture that's gonna feed into our Albedo channel. So go ahead, right click, create node, go to input. So here's all your various different node types. Go ahead with input, texture, and then texture 2D asset. And what this does is allows us to hook up a texture from our scene. So if you see here to the right, I can click that little guy and choose one of the scene textures. Um, don't know which one to go with, so I'll just go with this guy right here. And then to connect it, what you would normally do is drag it directly to the channel you want. And generally they're color coded for what will accept what. But this channel, this texture doesn't go straight out to a PBR master. What you instead need to do is just drag it out and it'll create this pin for connecting. And then connect it to nothing. And this will show you all of the things that will take that type as an input. So we can create a new node using that output this time. And what I want to do is go ahead and create another input texture. And what we want to do is a sample texture 2D. Like so. so, you can see a preview of the actual uh, node in action. And then now you'll see there's the RGBA channel here. And we're gonna connect it to the Albedo 3 channel. So that's basically um, about it. So now you'll see our texture is immediately updated like so. And we can go ahead now and save that asset. Flip back and there you see. So that is how you would connect a texture uh, up to your different channel. And you can do this on a number of different channels. So for example, if we wanted to go ahead and create a normal map, uh, we can do that. There's actually a neat little feature in here for turning an image into a normal map. So let's go ahead and use that. So we're gonna draw another pin off of our texture 2D like so. And we'll go in artistic, normal, normal create. And this basically just creates a normal map from a texture. So you can see the preview down there of the normal map that's generated. And then we'll just drag that into the normal channel, like so. And your end result isn't that impressive, but if you look down here, so here I've got the strength. So I could change the strength of this normal map up to say 15, and you see it's a much more pronounced result. Or we could plug other things in here, um, like a UV map details, uh, the offset, so if we want to move it around, or we could just straight out set the value that way. So these could be brought in via, you know, if we go down here and create node, you'll see there's um, math nodes, there's time-based nodes, etc. And those are all basically how you would use the logic to go ahead and create a more complicated shader. And again, I'm not going to get into huge depth on how to create shader, but what I am going to finally show you is how to create parameters. So finally, let's go ahead and save this. And there you'll see the normal map is also being applied to our shader. So the last thing I'm gonna show you here is using parameters. So let's move this guy over here. Now, what we did here um, is we defined this guy by basically clicking it as part of the shader. That means every time you use the shader, it's going to use the exact same texture. And a lot of times you're gonna to wanna to make a shader reusable across surfaces. So what if we wanted to make that um, texture map actually a parameter? Well, that's where this guy, this blackboard over here comes in. Just click this plus icon and you've got the different kinds of inputs that the lightweight shader pipeline supports. And one of them obviously is texture. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and name this guy source texture, like so, and it is a texture map. We can define a default texture or not if we wish. And just basically once it's created, you can just drag and drop into your scene and it'll bring it in as a property. So now instead of using this guy right here, so to get rid of a node, just uh, highlight it and hit the delete key, it will now remove it out. So now we're instead getting our texture from a parameter, like so. So our shader doesn't isn't rendering anything because there is no default provided. So we could go ahead and set a default here. And there you see the end rendered result. Now, let's save our asset. 
We'll move that out of the way. So now we come back here to our material. So here is the material we apply to our shader. Oh, sorry, Let's select this guy. Go down to the My Material section, drill it down, and now you'll see there is a new parameter there for source texture. I don't think I saved it though. Let me make sure I save that. All right, so with the source uh, sec texture setting here now, we can go ahead and just hit select. We can pick our texture to apply, and then boom, it comes in. So this allows you to parameterize shaders so that you can use them across um, the scope of your uh, life. So you, can, so you can reuse them across your project and have a set of parameters that drive the input into your particular shader. And essentially, that is it. That is the nuts and bolts of um, the new shader graph system. And then the, other than this, it's basically exactly the same as writing a shader from scratch. So you got to come in and basically learn what these various nodes do. And you'll notice there are an absolute ton of them. You've got filtering nodes. Uh, you've got uh, ability to change out channels. So I can take um, an RGBA and then just take the green channel of it or the alpha channel, etc. cetera. Um, we've got various different kinds of inputs uh, that we throw. So um, like that, we can get details from the scene, such as the fog settings, the screen location, the camera location, the ambient lighting. Um, so let's say we want the ambient lighting you see here. It just gives us an input with the settings for the color sky, the ground, and the equatorial lighting. And, you know, you'd use those to modify and work with your shader to create a complicated shader graph, which ultimately gives you the end result. Now, the cool thing in all of this is your PBR master here is ultimately just creating an HLSL shader like if you were doing it from scratch. So I can grab this guy at any time, right click it, and say copy shader. And now if I fire up trusty old notepad and paste, oof, all right, so that we didn't get our line feeds in it, so I should have probably, you know, let me do that with WordPad instead. Paste, you will see it's just generating a standard GLSL shader or HLSL shader for you, a pretty complicated one or long one, but all the nest, all the, eh, all the same, it is ultimately just creating a shader for you. It's just using visual tools to do it. Uh, so this actually can be a decent way to, to get your hands dirty learning how to script shaders, if, even if you're not that interested in going down uh, this particular road. Uh, so also this window is uh, completely dockable. Uh, you can be moved to a different uh, area section. Uh, it can be maximized like so. Uh, we've got settings down here. We can close the tab. We can add new tabs to it like so. And what I'm going to do is just exit out because I am done with the shader. I will save my shader. And the last thing to show is you can also do the exact same thing that we did by right clicking by going into the shader, selecting it here, and you'll notice there is a compile and show code option here. And I probably shouldn't have pressed that because what that does is fires up Visual Studio or whatever your associated IDE is in the background. Um, here, we'll let it run its course so at least you can see. And this will bring up your project and show the actual generated HLSL code. Uh, that we just created using shader graph like so so there is the ultimate generated code from that um it's even semi-documented on how things work which is pretty cool uh but uh yeah that's basically shader graph it does make shaders a lot more accessible and also makes experimentation a lot more uh, straightforward and you'll find that graph based pin connecting kind of setup is getting a lot more common um unreal engine uses it especially for blueprints uh cry engine uses it for their visual programming system godot uses it for the visual programming system so once you've learned one of them it, it's a transferable skill across all of the system so it does become a very straightforward and usable way of working and it is actually pretty solid pretty clean uh, so that is uh, shader graph in unity 2018.1 uh, let me know what you think is this a way you would go about working with things or are you going to stick to straight up script programming uh, do let me know in the comments down below. And once again, there is a complete step-by-step text-based version with animated graphics, etc., that shows you everything we just covered, uh, but in a text format available on Game From Scratch, which I will link down below in the comments. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I will see you all later. Goodbye.